here we will show you the parts of a tracheostomy tube. This is a tracheostomy tube. Now, this tube has an outer diameter and an inner diameter. The inner diameter of this is 8, which you can find written here on the flange. The length of this tube from the flange to the tip of the tracheostomy tube is 75.5. By this you know how well you have entered inside because in some obese people this length may not be enough for the tracheostomy tube to reach the appropriate place in the trachea from the skin. So you got to use an adjustable flange whereby you can increase the length which goes distal to the flange. This is the tube which remains inside. This is the flange which secures the tube to the neck and these fenestrations here are used to tie the tube around the neck. There is a bulb present here which is similar to what we see in an ET tube and this when inflated abuts against the tracheal wall. There could be tracheostomy tubes without the cuff as well. Cuff tubes should be used whenever we ventilate the patient otherwise there will be too many leaks and whenever we look for airway protection. Some of these tubes may also have a subglottic suction as it is seen in endotracheal tubes. Now you can see a purple tube which is inside the tracheostomy tube. This is an obturator. It keeps the lumen occluded and the distal end of it is smooth and tapering. So when you introduce the tracheostomy tube, this ensures smooth entry and also avoids injury. This remain latched here and after the tube has been introduced you got to pull it back, take it out and now the tube is ready for ventilation. Now we have two tubes here, one with a single lumen which is this but there are tubes available in which you can have a double lumen tube, one introducing inside the other one. The other thing you can see in this tube is the presence of fenestrations. There are holes on the upper side of the tube so when the tube is placed like this on the patient these holes allow the air to pass through the tracheostomy tube beyond the vocal cords and then through the mouth. So this is used when we desire the patients to speak. They may also clear some secretions from these ports, but the presence of these ports predispose to aspiration. And also, if we are ventilating the patient and keeping the pores open, they will lead to leaks. Now you have two inner tubes, one with fenestrations. So if you want the fenestration function to continue, you introduce this tube, you will see that fenestrations match each other and the tube should be pushed well so that it locks and now when you have to pull it out there is a ring which you can pull to take the tube out. But if you do not want the fenestrations to work then you can use a tube without fenestration. So once we introduce this one there will be no leaks the patient will not be able to cough. Now why this double lumen how else do they help? They help in cleaning. Otherwise, in single lumens, you have to introduce a catheter and clean. When introducing a catheter for cleaning, please remember that the catheter has to be introduced to the length of the uh, tracheostomy tube and the catheter should not go too much beyond the tip of the tracheostomy tubes. So you know this length, you know this length, so you introduce your catheter accordingly so that you do not overshoot the tip significantly. Now if you have another tube inside and if you need to clean all you need to do is take this tube out and clean it. It can be cleaned with sterile water and you can introduce a brush which can clean the inner lumen and then reintroduce and lock it in place for further use. This 
cleaning can be done two to three times. This is useful when we send patients to home on tracheostomy tubes because then there is an ease but that they can take it out and clean without having uh, requiring the services of a suction machine although it is desirable that they also have suction machine and the other thing is if there is a sudden block the patient or the caretaker can immediately pull the tube out so that the outer lumen the outer tube lumen is patent and the patient can continue to breathe till you have cleared the inner tube so you can choose a double lumen tube or a single lumen tube you know how to clean the tubes in this the only way you can do it is by introducing a suction catheter whereas in this one you can withdraw the inner tube and take do uh, cleaning of the inner tube and then reintroduce it you can choose a fenestrated tube or a non fenestrated tube depending on your needs you can occlude the fenestrations by the inner tube again depending upon your need fenestrations will cause air leak so in ventilated patients they should be kept closed but they allow the patient to speak you can have a spe speaking valve attached here as well but this fenestrations may also help them to attain some kind of speech and when we wean them off when we planning to take the tracheostomy a tube off we can look at how able uh, we can let the patients breathe actually through these fenestrations and also they can maybe clear the secretions through these fenestrations this is the basic parts of the tube the other thing you can see is <coughs> the uh, size of the tube on the flange the length on the flange and the inner diameter the diameter of the inner tubes is less than this so this is eight size but this inner diameter is seven size that you should consider whenever you introduce a double lumen tube into a patient that's done